Welcome to the latest in our regular series of Tech Explained videos, comparing and contrasting the performance and suitability of professional grade components. And this time we're taking a look at Nvidia Workstation GPU accelerators. These used to be the Quadro series. So if you've got a Quadro in your current system and are wondering what the modern replacement for it is, then this is the video for you. There's a whole range of Nvidia Workstation GPUs available, but before we get into the individual cards, let's take a moment to understand what we mean by the term professional when referring to GPU accelerators. Nvidia has three broad ranges of GPUs, consumer, professional, and data center. Its GeForce consumer GPUs are designed for use in gaming PCs and laptops, professional GPUs for workstations, and data center GPUs for use in servers. Both professional and data center cars are tried, tested, and certified for high demand environments where constant and more importantly, consistent performance and reliability are key. It usually refers to cars having enhanced warranty periods, being supported by certified drivers for a wide range of applications, and error correcting code memory. This is designed to protect data from corruption, so any errors are eradicated prior to them affecting the workload being processed. Data center cars are passively cooled as opposed to the other two which are actively cooled, simply due to the fact that the cooling function is handled within the server chassis. For these reasons, data center cars are more expensive than workstation cars, whilst consumer cars are less expensive. At the time of making this video, the latest professional workstation GPUs from NVIDIA are based on either the Ampere or Turing architectures, Ampere being the highest performer and Turing being the more budget range. The Ampere range comprises of the RTX A6000, A5500, A5000, A4500, A4000 and the RTX A2000. The Ampere architecture accelerates graphics workflows with CUDA calls for rendering, Tensor calls for AI workloads and RT for ray tracing. Additionally, Ampere GPUs feature PCIe Express Gen 4, which provides twice the bandwidth of PCIe Gen 3. This boosts data transfer speed between the GPU, CPU and system memory. For data intensive tasks such as data science, animation, game design or complex visualization. To better understand any relative performance and ideal use cases, we need to consider the specs of the cards. Firstly, the RTX A2000 is a power-efficient, low-profile card designed for use in small form factor workstations, whereas all the other cards are designed for regular workstation installation. Both the RTX A4000 and A2000 lack NVLink support, so you can't connect two cards together to boost performance and share memory, so these will be best considered for light to medium workloads. Across the range, the number of CUDA cores, Tensor cores and RT cores increase, as does the memory, indicating they're more suitable for more and more demanding workloads as you step up the range. Perhaps unsurprisingly, this does come at a greater cost and greater power consumption. Now let's look at the Turing-based GPU cards. These are the T1000, the T600 and the T400, and they're designed to provide the cost-effective performance features and reliability in a powerful, small form factor. Crucially, they lack the ray tracing and AI capabilities that the Ampere cards possess, and so they're aimed at much lighter graphical workloads. However, they consume much less power, cost significantly less, and are still capable of driving up to four high-resolution screens. So there you go, I hope we've made NVIDIA Workstation GPUs a little bit clearer for you after watching this video, but please don't hesitate to comment below if you need further advice from our pro graphics experts. As we said previously, we'll also be producing more of these videos looking at various areas of graphics technology and how best to use it, so keep your eyes peeled for those and subscribe so you don't miss out.